solving equations involving vertical angles and linear pairs. All right, so first we're going to um, cover vertical angles real quick. Um, and we have covered this in a couple other ones. Um, two of the other videos I made for this week were finding angle measures given two intersecting lines. I talked about vertical angles in that one. And then also identifying linear pairs and vertical angles. So that one definitely talks about vertical angles. So we'll go ahead and talk about vertical angles again. So vertical angles are congruent. That's the first thing you should know. And the way to identify them is you see a line that crosses like this. And I'm going to change colors just so I can show you. So the vertical angles are the angles that are across the vertex. So these two, so if I were to cross this vertex like this, those are vertical angles. So these two are congruent. Oops, sorry, clicked on the wrong button there. And then we can also go across the vertex this way. So those would also be vertical angles. Um, and vertical angles are always congruent. So it's super easy. If you know one side and you go across the vertex, you know what the other side has to equal. So even if they give you an equation like what they're doing on this one, we know what they have to equal. Linear pair. Um, was that what it was called? Linear pair? I want to make sure. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, and linear pairs. So linear pairs um, are angles on a line which add up to 180 degrees. So these have to add up to 180 degrees. So it's basically if I draw a line like this and I have an angle coming off of it, then angle one and angle two, and I'm just labeling this way, these are linear angles. They're on a line together and they add up to 180 degrees. We also call this supplementary angles. So that's supplementary means the same thing. It means they add up to 180 degrees. So these were our quick notes that we wrote um, for these two situations. And you can see down here, they, they gave you the word supplementary and they're giving you vertical angles. So I just went through really quickly and gave those to you on this paper. So I'm gonna go to, I guess I will write this in green. We'll see how this comes out. Um, so if we go like this, and I know this is not perfect from what they drew. Mine does not look quite right. We have 8x minus 75, like this. Um, so I'll go to black here. Um, so we know this is 119 degrees. And then if we go across the vertex like this, so we're going from 119 across, this is angle Z. Well, angle Z has to equal 119 degrees. These are vertical angles. That is what I mean by going across the vertex there. So right away, we know what angle Z equals. So now we have to find out what um, x is inside of here. So first we need to know what this whole angle is. And then we can go back and figure out what x needs to be. So first, what we need to do is remember that, let's see what color can I choose here. I'll do kind of a dark, a darker green on this one. So remember that a linear pair, and this is a line, so these two have to add up to 180 degrees. So if I know they have to add up to 180 degrees and I have 119, I'm gonna subtract 119 to see what I have left. Borrow, get one, and I get six, so I get 61 here. So I know that this side has to equal 61. So if I know this side equals 61, and it also equals eight X minus 75, I can just put those two equations together, or those, those Sorry, they're not both equations. I can um, set the number equal to the um, expression. Using the correct terminology here. Okay, the pen's arguing with me a little bit. 75, and I know that equals 61. All right, so we're gonna start solving this. So remember, when I'm trying to get a variable by itself, what I wanna do is I wanna start undoing things that are being done to it. The first thing to undo is addition or subtraction because it makes it easier. It's not that you can't undo the eight first, but if I undo the multiplication here, then I have to divide everything 
by eight. And that looks like it creates a lot of fractions. It's a little stressful, I don't feel like doing that. So instead I'm going to look at the 75 first. Um, always do addition subtraction first, just makes it a little bit easier on you. You don't have to deal with fractions. Um, so if it's being subtracted, I'm gonna undo it by adding it. If I add to the left side of the equation, and that means this equal sign here, which I just drew along to show you, then I also have to do it to the right side like that. So I'm gonna draw a line. 8x is just gonna drop down. I haven't done anything to it yet. 75 minus 75, so negative 75 plus 75. They're the exact same number, one's positive, one negative. They eliminate, they become zero. So that's gonna equal, I have um, 61 plus 75, so I get six and I get 13. So I get 136. Um, and we can always confirm this on a calculator just to make sure that I'm not doing my math funky. So perfect, we have 136. So our last step is to deal with this eight. So we've already talked about this to undo the multiplication, I would divide. If I divide on the left side again, I mean, there's a left side of the equation and a right side of the equation. I have to also divide on the right side there. Any number divided by itself is one. So I'm left with X equals, and then we'll go to our handy dandy calculator here and we're gonna have 136 divided by eight and we get 17. So um, we have, whoa, my pencil jumped way up high. So we know that x equals 17 and z equals 119. So 17 is not the angle. Remember, the angle was 61. And then we had to go and plug it in to figure out what x actually was. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and actually start one of these. Darn it, I didn't want to erase all of that. Make that a little smaller, so. I can just erase this stuff. And I don't have to rewrite my definitions. Okay, so let's go ahead and click start. All right. So on this one, and I'm going to try to draw this. Just kind of up out of the way here. I have a little more room to work things out. So I have z degrees, and it's a z, not a 2. 6x minus 7 degrees, and 9x minus 43 degrees. So they're not straight out giving us one of the angles on the, like they did on the, the first example. But we can still start applying the rules that we already know. So we know vertical angles are across from each other. I don't know anything about the one across from Z yet, so I'm gonna ignore that. I'm gonna work on X first. So I can look at these two. This has an X in its binomial, this has an X in its binomial. So it will be very easy to just set these equal to each other. I know they have to equal each other. They're vertical angles, they are congruent, which means they are the same measurement. So they have to be equal. So now what I wanna do is I wanna start getting these X's together first. So. Um, we want to move one of them over to the other side. Again, by side, I mean of that equal sign. So this is a positive 6, so I'm going to subtract it. Whenever we move across the equal sign, we're undoing what's being done. So it's a, if it's a positive 6, then I'm going to subtract it to come over. So then I have 9 minus 6 is 3, and I bring down the x. Make sure you always bring the x with it. I do have a lot of students that forget that part. 6x six minus 6x six is zero and then we have seven all right so now we need to bring this 43 over to the other side here so we're going to undo subtraction with addition we have 3x because that 3x just drops down we haven't done anything with it 43 and 43 one's positive one's negative they cancel equals and we get let's see negative seven plus 43 Remember, one is negative and one is positive, so it means I'm going to subtract, and the bigger number will decide my sign. 43 is definitely bigger than 7, so my answer will be positive. And then I'm just going to subtract these, so I'm going to end up with 36. So my last step is to undo this multiplication here. 
by dividing. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Um, so I'm just going to write it off to the side here. x equals, because I don't have enough room to write it down below, 36 divided by 3. So I know 3 can go into 3 once, 3 can go into 6 twice. So I did a bit of mental math there. Again, you can always use the calculator for that. So now we do have x. So now our next step is finding z. So I need to know what one of these full angles is in order to find z. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to plug in what I just got for x. So instead of, I'm going to use 9x minus 43, but instead of saying 9x, I'm going to say 12. Because I know x is 12. I just figured that out. So now I do 9 times 12. And I'm going to pull up the handy dandy calculator here. 9 times 12 is 108 minus 43 so minus oh, I clicked on the calculator minus 43 oh that didn't work I hit zero 108 minus 43 probably could have done this a little faster without the calculator here so I know that this angle is 63 so I had to find x by setting these equal to each other then I had to go back and plug it in to figure out what the actual angle was. The reason I have to do that is because I need to know what the angle is so that I can work on a linear pair here. So I know that these two are on a line, and they have to add up to 180 degrees. I know that, but I needed to know what one of them was to figure the missing piece. So now I know that the, the green part here is 65. I can just subtract. So I get 7 if I borrow. So 5, 1, 1. So Z has to be 115 degrees. Because I just did the, the linear pair part. All right, so X was 12. And they don't want me to put degrees in there, I guess. Because they, they don't have the degree symbol available to me. So let's go ahead and check it. All right, perfect. So they don't seem to care too much about the degree symbol. All right, let's try. Another one here. Careful, I don't want to erase my definitions up there. Oh, it takes a little longer to erase with this little one. Okay. All right, so we have something that looks like this. And then this area is 8x plus 58. This one is z. And then this one is 11x plus 52. Like that. And they have a little degree symbol by them all too. Okay. So this is very similar to the first one where they're not giving us an angle straight out. So we're going to have to go through and look for vertical angles. That's usually the first easy one to do. So if I go vertical, I know these two angles have to be equal to each other. They did give me a binomial for each. And in the binomial is only a variable of x. So the only time this might not work is if this had a, a variable of x and this one had a variable of y. Well, I don't want two different variables. But as long as they have the same variable, then I can set them equal to each other and we can solve this. All right, so now I want to bring the x's together. So I'm going to bring this 8 over to the 11. So it's a positive 8. I'm going to subtract it to undo the addition, because even though I say positive 8, it's actually plus 8. We just don't say plus 8x plus 58. Sounds funny. But plus and positive mean the same thing. So 8x minus 8x, any number minus itself crosses out and then we bring 58 down equals 11x minus 8 so we just subtract the two coefficients here so 11 minus 8 we get 3x and we bring 52 down so don't forget to bring down the pieces that you haven't used um, I do have a lot of students that tend to forget the pieces we got it we need to make sure we bring those pieces down um, so now the 52 we're going to bring to the other side so minus 52 because it's positive 52 so to undo a positive you 
subtract it. So now we have 58 minus 52, and we get 6 equals, we bring down the 3x, haven't done anything with it yet, 52 minus 52 cancels. So now we're going to undo the multiplication here with division. On both sides, 6 divided by 3 is 2, 3 divided by 3 is 1, so we know what x is. Go ahead and type it in here. So we know x is 2. Um, so now we have to go through, and again, we have to figure out what this angle is. Because we're going to look at, run out of my colors here again. I'll do orange this time. So we're, we need to look at a, a linear pair here. But in order to know, I know they add up to 180 degrees, but I need to know one of them in order to use that equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 2 that I just figured out, and I'm going to go 11 instead of x. What does x equal? 2. 2 plus 52. This is 22 plus 52. So I'm going to add these two together, and I'm going to get 74. So I know this angle in here equals 74. And then remember, come over here and select this one. The angles on a, on a linear pair, so when they're on an, a line, they add up to 180 degrees. And then if I already know that this piece of the 180 is 74, I'm just going to subtract 74 from 180, and this will tell me what I have left. I have 10, 6, 0, and 1. 106 degrees, and that would be right there. Sorry, I know it's on the other side of the equation here. I kind of went through our drawing. But that's the 106 degrees for Z. Boom. So this one does require quite a bit of steps. It's not that any one step is, is terribly difficult. It's just remembering kind of the order of the steps. Um, and for most, most of these, we're going to start with a vertical angle and then work our way to a linear pair. So you're going to use both. You just have to pay attention which one you're starting with. Okay. All right. So I've got the pen, and we're going to click next. We're going to do one more of these. All right. So we have C 13x minus 44. And See if I can get in here, 15x minus 20. I didn't give myself enough room to write that. So sorry, that's 15x minus 28. Um, it might be a little easier. Um, if you don't have a lot of room, which I don't, I should probably refrain from drawing it on this side because I don't have a lot of room because I wrote these notes up top. So we can always refer to this diagram here, um, which would give us a little bit more room. I'm actually going to go ahead and undo this real quick. Just, we'll refer to this one because it's a little too too much to keep trying to add them all in there. Um, so if I look at this one, um, if I try to do vertical angles first and I go across, I have an X on this side and I have a Z on this side. We do not want to set those equal to each other. Um, what just happened? Interesting. I don't know why that all just went blank. Well, I think I'm going to just have to set it to new so it's not wasting too much time. So we're going to lose our, our definitions there for a moment. Um, so for vertical angles, that's going across. But we have an X on this side and we have a Z on this side. We don't want to make those equal each other because we're not going to be able to solve that. So remember, when you, when you set two things equal to each other, if they both have a variable, you want them to be the same variable. Otherwise, you won't be able to solve it. So instead, what we're going to look at is this. And since I did just give myself more room, we want to look at this linear pair. And I'm just going to draw this half. So I'm ignoring the other side here. So we have 15x minus 28. And we have 13x minus 44. So that goes in there. Like this. And this 15x minus 28 goes on this side. That's not quite right as far as the drawing goes, 
And remember, there is another line going off this direction, but I'm just ignoring it for a moment so that you can see it is, in fact, a line if we ignore that other line. And anytime you have a line, they add up to 180 degrees. So I'm going to go 15x minus 28 equals, nope. I started to make them equal to each other. I'm actually going to give myself a little more room down here. 15x minus 28. I want to add 13x minus 44. I want to add these two together because if I add them together, they equal 180 degrees. So we're not doing vertical pair first. We're doing linear, or sorry, vertical angles. We're doing linear pair first. So now I'm just going to add like terms together. So I have a couple of like terms here. I underlined them. So 15x is like term to 13x. 28 is like term to 44. So let's add those first. Wait, whoop. We have 15x plus 13x. We get 28x. And then we have negative 28 and negative 44. Since they're both negative, we keep the negative and we just add the two numbers. So we end up with, let's see, 12, 72, I believe. You can check that on the calculator. Oh, oops. I can click on the calculator. Um, and it does, Alex does have the calculator open here also. I'm just used to using my calculator on the computer. So we have 28 plus 44, and that gets us 72. So if you wanted to check to see if the negatives are there, so you, you could type in 28, and then you should have something like this little swap button. It'll make 28 negative. And then you say plus 44, and you hit swap again, then equals, and you get negative 72. All right, and that equals 188. All right, so we're trying to x by itself, so we need to start doing that undo. So we're going to undo this by doing addition and subtraction first. So we're going to add 72 since it's minus 72. We, have, we bring down our 28x. Remember, if you don't use it, bring it down. Any number minus itself is zero, so negative 72 plus 72, they're opposites, same number, means it's going to cancel out, and then we have 182 plus 72, so we get 252, I believe, 180 plus 72, 252. All right, so our last step is to undo this multiplication with division. So we have 28 divided by 28, x equals 9. Whoa, I did a curly Q. 9. All right, so that was a whole lot of work for our first piece, our 9. Now, we know what x is. So what I want to do is I want to go through and I want to figure out really quick, what is 15x minus 28? The reason I'm focusing on this one is because if I figure out this side, I will know exactly what this side equals. So I can do one equation, and I will have my end answer, and I'm going to put this in blue up top here. So I have 15 instead of x. I know x is 9 minus 28. So I should have closed my calculator so quickly. So I have 15 times 9, which I get, I'm doing that for 135 minus 28, so I'm going to go minus 28, and I get 107. So this side, I plugged in x, and I know this side equals 107. Vertical angles tell, tells me if I go across, that z also has to equal 107. So go ahead and put 9 in here. And we're going to click check. As long as everything went right, we're good to go. All right, we're done with that one. That was a long one.